What's up guys, Matt from footballboots.co.uk and today we've got a mega unboxing of some of the newest and most underrated boots on the market. So watch on and let us know which model you'd personally choose in the upcoming poll card and why in the comment section below. You'll also be some of the first people to get a bonus look at the all new second gen New Balance Vizaro 2.0s so stay tuned and let us know what you think of the updated model. As always, if you like the look of any of the boots on show, then head over to our website and use the code BLACKORANGE for 10% off from Level Soccer. The pair you're seeing today are actually the latest colorway, officially labelled as True Blue, Puma White and Puma Black, and in all honesty, look incredibly sharp. Definitely better than the previous tricks and yellow paint jobs. So these Evo Speed SL2s aren't actually the Puma model of choice for the likes of Giorgio Aguero, Antoine Griezmann, Marco Royce and Hector Bellerin. Instead, they opt for the more durable SLS version, as the standard SLs only have a lifespan of 10 games as marketed by Puma themselves. Although being incredibly similar to the first gen Evo Speed SLs, the updated model features a gradient effect on the side panels to create a graphic which transforms the colour from true blue into Puma black. The only other colour you'll find is Puma White to create their form stripe on the lateral side panel and Evo Speed branding opposite. So sticking with the speed theme, let's change brands to New Balance and check out their much improved Furon 2.0 in an absolute stunner of a colourway. Now don't get me wrong, my first choice lightweight attack minded boot I'd personally go for would be the Nike Recoil Vapor 11. But both the previous seen Evo Speed SL2s and these Furon 2.0s wouldn't be a bad backup in all fairness. The first gen Furons were up there with my worst boots on the market at the time. They were just so unbelievably stiff and all round uncomfortable. But New Balance really have picked up their game for their second helping of the silo due to the notably softer mesh upper. Looking at the colourway to start and New Balance have smashed it by coating their latest Furon in full vibrant red with added touches of black and white for branding and detailing. Although lacking the substantial list of world class stars like Nike and Adidas, New Balance have managed to lure in a few top level players with the Furon 2.0, including Kevin Morales, Yannick Bellassi, Kasper Schmeichel and Alvaro Negredo. One of the modified features of the Furon 2.0 is the Galaxy Sprint Spike Collar, which aims to hug tightly around the ankle, however remaining comfortable for a more sock like fit and added lockdown feel. A factor which hasn't changed on New Balance's lightweight boot is the sole plate. Designed to offer players high level responsiveness, the Furon outsole is very stiff from heel to toe, so don't expect underfoot flexibility and comfort. It's all about speed for the Furon 2.0. The sole plate itself also prefers to offer a 100% bladed stud rather than a mixture of conical types, again resulting in benefits to quick cuts and agile movements. Similar to the Mercurial Vapor 9, the Furon only features two rear FG studs and from my own personal experience, I found there to be a lack of traction at the heel and mine also snapped from excessive pressure on just two studs rather than four. Remember, coming up in the video is the newly released Vizarro 2.0s, but let's for now head over to Umbro for their classic meets modern Medusa Pro. First off, fair play to Umbro for thinking outside the box to produce a pair of boots which possess his traditional touch and feel, however also managing to stay lightweight with added lockdown, responsiveness and stability. Right now in the UK, I probably wouldn't recommend opting for this specific Medusa colourway. The elegant white and dawn blue look would get absolutely ruined on the current mud bath pitches. Umbro have actually just released an orange and black colourway, which us guys at footballboots.co.uk give a big thumbs up to. Taking a closer look at how the Medusa Pros are constructed, and the white toe box is where the classic K-Leather feels can be found. Trust me, the quality of leather is pretty strong. You get a nice cushion sensation when controlling the ball, but also good grip when striking it with different shapes. Where the K-Leather stops, here's where the boot changes its construction to both mesh and synthetic materials across the side panels and heel. To ensure stability and support, Umbro used their trademark A-frame technology within the boot, which can be seen through the transparent mesh side panels. The synthetic sections of the boot offer too much bolder colours compared to the white leather, significantly in dawn blue, however also in fiery red, again adding to the classic meets modern theme. So unlike the Furon 2.0s, the Medusa Pros feature a completely different type of sole plate and stud configuration, which is aimed more towards comfort and combination traction rather than pure acceleration. The Medusa Pro actually shares the same outsole as its Velocita counterpart, which uses triangular shaped studs on the lateral side of the boot and conical on the medial, so players gain benefits to both agile and rotational movements. So we've already seen Puma's Evo Speed SL2, but what about their recently released Evo Power Vigor 1 in an AG sole plate? Now while these aren't a pair of boots which I'd personally go for because they're just so wide fitting, they'd be absolutely ideal for Blake here at the Black and Orange team. They really are incredibly wide in the midfoot and toe box. Alongside being wide fitting, the Evo Power Vigor 1s have such a soft synthetic upper, composed from Puma's Adapt Light and Grip Text materials. 
So if you're looking for pure comfort, then these boots could be a serious option for you. So there's been three colorways since the Eva Power Vigor ones were released. The original camos, the newest black and pink version, but we have probably the most neutral edition in green gecko, black and safety yellow. Worn by players within the spine of the team, including Gianluigi Buffon, Giorgio Chiellini, Yaya Torre and Olivier Giroud, Puma's headline wearers really epitomise the silo's theme through their powerful style of play. The Evo Power Silo has always posed as a forward-thinking Puma model, and the latest generation continues that approach through the AccuFoam pads, which not only feature on the midfoot for cushion touch, but also acts as an inner lining to create a very snug and cushioned fit and feel. Opting to flaunt a low-cut silhouette compared to its mid-cut Evo Touch counterpart, the Evo Power Vigor 1s feature an Evo knit construction across the tongue region and also wraps around the lower ankle. As mentioned, we have the AG stuck configuration, so perfect for players regularly training and playing on artificial surfaces. The differences between the AG and FG sole plate is that this added conical studs placed on the outsole for artificial use, and they're actually hollowed out to increase the traction on the rubber crumb surface. Another nice touch and difference is how Puma have added an extra layer of rough synthetic around the toe box to increase the level of durability as regularly playing on 3G pitches can lead to premature sole separation. So let's wrap up the video by bringing you an exclusive first look at the brand new and highly anticipated new Balance Visaro 2.0. The first Vizaros were a pretty solid alternative option to Nike's Hypervenom and Adidas's A Silo. But what do you guys think of the modified Vizaro 2.0? Let's take a closer look and then let us know what you think. Renowned for possessing a honeycomb like synthetic upper, New Balance have opted to continue such a design, however, modified the shape and layout. One thing's for certain, and that's how it's definitely unique. At a first glance, is it a boot for me? To be honest, no. It looks pretty cheap, and there's even a point to say that even a scaled down model by Nike or Adidas could still possess a softer, more flexible, and all round better upper, but we're really gonna have to test these to gain a more quality opinion. Essentially posing in grey and red, New Balance officially labeled the first second gen Bizarro 2.0 colorway as Typhoon and Tornado, again unique. The overall idea for the Bizarro 2.0s are to aid a player's ball control, and that's made evident by the dramatic pods across the synthetic upper, which are both embossed and debossed to create enhanced friction. But which boot has been your pick within the big unboxing? Vote in the poll card now, explain your decision in the comment section below and if you have any questions then feel free to ask and I'll reply back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching, cheers.